Hi everyone. Have you ever needed to kickstart a project or get approval from someone in a business or organization in order to start a project and start making changes and start delivering value to that area? Well, one of the best ways to do that is with a project charter. And this is the absolute best project charter template that I've ever used and it's extremely handy. We're going to go through it and each of the different sections, what to include in your project charter and we're going to create it in Excel at the same time so you can take it away and use it straight away in your own business. It's gonna be a whole bunch of fun. Let's get into the sheet. Now the first thing we want is the actual name that it's a project charter itself. So we're just going to put project charter here and that way everyone knows exactly what to expect. The second thing we want is a, an area for our general project information. And this is going to include things like the project name and project sponsor. Um, but we also want the charter date. So the date that we have put this together. You can use this tool to increase the indent a little bit and we'll make these bold and make them stand out just ever so slightly. Now this is where we're going to input our project name, our project sponsor, our project manager, our expected start date, and our expected completion date as well. All of these are important as a high level overview so we know the key players and the key things, the key dates. And then we're going to get into a few more high level details that is just enough information for someone to be able to approve this project. We're also just going to select this whole area really quickly go to more borders and we're just going to give ourselves a nice light horizontal line in here. Now the project name can be any name the project uh, for the project that you call your project and that people recognize it by. Uh, the project sponsor is the person who is paying for the project. So who do you need the, the resources from or to get access to that area? That's the project sponsor who needs to approve this project charter. Uh, the project manager is the person leading the project. So that's the person who will be coordinating all of the people and resources to try and get this thing done. Then we've got this expected start date and the expected completion date. And of course we can, if we right click this, we can change this to a custom number, any number that you like. For this one, we've got two days, four months and two years. And that's the way that it shows here quite nicely. Now we've got the, a little bit more detail that we can fill out and these are our project details. Now for our project details, here's what we do. First of all, we want our project description. And this is where we put our high level project description, the purpose and the reason why we're doing the project. Next, we want our key requirements. And here is where we put what is required to be delivered. So this could also be uh, written as a features list or a high level list of what's required as an output of the project. For example, you know, we're going to deliver a web page, online payments, uh, you know, backend integration, and uh, you know, and anything else that's related to this project in a high level. Next, we want our expected benefits. So what are the benefits that we're going to get out of delivering this project? For example, we might have an, an enhanced customer experience or we might have a saving of, of certain amount of hours every year. We might have increased sales uh, out, of, uh, out of our web channel, for example. And we can do all of this in a bullet point list or just in a, in a uh, normal writing or a sentence as we've got here. Now, along with the expected benefits, we also want the estimated costs and resources that we're going to be needing and using. For example, maybe it's going to cost us 35,000 or 100,000 or a million or a couple of million dollars. Uh, and maybe we're going to need these amount of resources or these particular resources, systems, uh, people that we're going to need and all of those sorts of things. And again, can be either a bullet point list or just describing it as we're going along here. Now that we've done those two high level things, we want the high level schedule or the high level milestones that we're going to be doing along on our project. What are the dates that we're expecting to, to deliver all of these items? And we can put those against the features that we have. So uh, again, we maybe we have feature one, feature two, feature three, and maybe we can put high level dates against each of those high level features. Remember, we don't want to go into too much detail. We just want the, the basics and the high level detail so that we can show this to an executive and they can see everything at a glance. That's really the most important thing here. 
Now, once we've got the expected milestones, we really want to see the project team. So what are the resources and what team do we need to pull this off? With our project team, we might have the project sponsor who's uh, making the decisions at the top, the project manager. We might have business analysts, developers, test leads, subject matter experts, or anything else in the area that you're working in for your project or your industry. Now, along with the project team and the project resources, we might have stakeholders. So who are the people who are going to be needing to be informed and uh, come along for the ride? So who's going to be impacted as well? Who's going to be impacted by our project? And we need to keep them on side. We can have these as their name and their role or departments or areas or teams who are impacted and who we need to work with. Now, our last two are also still really important. And the, the last, second last one is our overall project risk. Again, we really only want this to be very high level. So at a high level and at a, because it's early days, we may not know everything, but what is the, the high level risk? What could go wrong? What's the likelihood of that happening? And what's the impact if it does happen? And how are we going to mitigate that? Maybe we need some controls in here, but again, it can be a list um, and usually it's easiest to do it that way for our risks. Now, the last one is our project exit criteria, also known as our success criteria. For example, maybe we're delivering each of these features, usable working features, delivered on time. Uh, what are the conditions to be met in order to close off the project? Now, maybe we have some negative conditions as well. Maybe if we, we go over $2 million, then maybe we need to close this project down because that's all the money we actually have and that there isn't any more. So what is the exit criteria? Good or bad, uh, but mostly good usually uh, for our project. And now, along with all of these things, we have this beautiful project charter with all of the most important things, the best things uh, that will really help you get your project approved and help it start off on the best way possible so that everyone is on the same page and has a, has a good lot of information to get started. I've really enjoyed spending time with you in creating this project charter. I hope you've enjoyed spending the time with me as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.